speeders up, sounds speeding. All right, guys, I want to welcome you guys back to episode three. We have a good episode. If you guys missed it already, episode one and episode two, it's already on YouTube. Um, we're also on Anchor now. Oh, we're on Anchor now. We're on Anchor, yeah. Great. Yeah, podcast. And cool. if you guys have any questions you want us to ask or have us chat about, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments. We, we would definitely... Uh, entertain it so yeah we we love hearing from our fans yeah <laughs> so jamie man it's up to you the man the legend i'm gonna send it up to jamie all right you know it's not it's not easy being a hero so <laughs> um to a lot of people you know it's it's, it's difficult at times I, I i struggle with that on a daily basis really but yeah yeah this is this is jeremy jeremy's our executive administrator on the other side of the house he hey actually guys. does. He actually does work. You know. Meanwhile, you know the rest of us. Yeah. You know, depending on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened, I'm still working. <laughs> All my life. I'm always working, man. <laughs> that's good. That's I'm good. behind I, the scenes. I man. guess that's okay. I'm blessed. So, dude, Jeremy, like, tell us a little bit about your yourself, man. What's 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 your deal? How did you come about? Ah, uh, how did I end up here? So, yeah. basically, I came from France. Uh, now two years and a half, I think, two years and a half ago. So I was in the military in France. Uh, then I do like four, five years. I've been deployed in Ivory Coast in Africa. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And then I start being in the security industry, start being a bodyguard doing close protection, executive protection. Uh, I met some good people in Monaco, in the south of France, next to Nice, Rivera Coast. and. And then from there with them, I start traveling the world, speaking English, I mean, as I can. And they did buy, uh, they did buy a big house here in, um, in Beverly Hills, like, so now it's like one year and a half ago. Yeah. And when I arrived here, I was like, wow, this is America? I mean, I kind of like it, so I'm going to buy my home. So we stopped our contract and then uh, I met Jamie, he gave me my shot, my chance, and here I am. Yeah, you know, uh, prior to uh, me meeting Jeremy, apparently he was a very professional guy, worked hard, was reliable, um, very honest, and, you know, a lot of things changed. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I think the trend is Jamie's the, the man that's giving everyone a shot. Like, Correct. I wouldn't be here. This whole this whole podcast I did would never happen no, you had, know. had Jamie in the, you know, I think you can feel people or something. No, um, we talked about this the other day. Jamie has an eye for talent, and not a lot of people have that. You know what? I'll, I'll put myself out there. And uh, um, when I was in the FBI, a lot of people, you know, don't believe me when I say that. But I was actually able to get a hold of my uh, personnel file, and they had an evaluation of me. Obviously, right? we might have to edit this out. I, I don't know about disclosing this, but they—they, they <laughs> I was able to get my file when I when I left. And uh, one of the weird things that, that showed up, and it was really weird, was uh, something along the lines like displays unusual, what was it? Displays unusual level of leadership ability or something like that mm -hmm. was an evaluation. And that was only like, look, man, I know, tell, I, I, I used to be a, a training manager and I used to tell people, I said, everybody, because they've been in a company for X amount of years, feel or deserve they can be management or move their way up, right? That we all feel that. If we've been mm -hmm. in a company for long, we feel we deserve it. But not a lot of people have that skill. You, some people can be trained and grow, but some people just don't have it. And when, when you're up at the management level, a lot has to do with your ability to communicate, yeah. train, and, and basically teach someone to be a mirror version of you. No, man, you got to know your audience and you got to know people's abilities and, and what makes them tick and what their limitations are. I mean, no one's fucking perfect, you know? And, you know, there's a lot of different leadership styles. Like, a guy could be a fucking total douchebag. I think that's old school management style where do as I fucking say, fuck you, yeah. or you're fucking fired, <laughs> right? <laughs> just, it doesn't suck. Yeah. To me, I, I don't like behaving that way. And I just don't believe it works as well as just... You know, uh, finding the right people and, and, and making making their abilities work for you instead of fucking forcing shit on somebody. Look, it doesn't I, work. I just don't like babysitting. Like, you're an adult. You want to go party? Go ahead. But if, if we have to be somewhere at 8 o'clock tomorrow, be there at 8 o'clock. Or, like, if you're a fucking manager, you have to look at the person and go, can this person do the job? 
you know, like that. If the answer is yes, great. You've already done most of the work. You know, yeah, you have to recognize people for their abilities. Not everybody is the same, obviously. And if you try to have the same rules, the same way to manage everybody, it cannot work yeah. because we are all different. That's what they were doing back then, like maybe 10, 20 years ago. Years ago yeah. But now with the new generation, Google, Yahoo, and even now in security everywhere, we, this is person by person by person. You have to recognize what this guy is good for, and then you're gonna put it in the right place. And this guy is gonna do his best because you put it in the right place. And that's kind of what you do because you can recognize what people does, what they are good at, and then you can just do your game. And that, that works actually. You just move the fucking pieces around the chessboard. You know, right. is, is what you do. You, 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 you know, like, like, like I used to use that as an analogy, like in the chessboard, pawns can move only a certain way. You know, your bishops can move a certain way. Your queen moves a certain way, but they can't all do the same fucking thing. No, no, no. <laughs> you, know? you can't have 10 Kobe's. You know, you just couldn't. It's time for championship, right? It wouldn't work. You know, although on paper it looks great, right? Oh, I have 10 Kobe's. No, oh, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. wouldn't work. No. You know, because he's good at what he does. He needs other pieces around him. And and just piggyback off of what Jeremy said, what he said is right on the button because me and you might have a good relationship. You can talk to me a certain way. Where maybe Jamie will talk to me. I'm like, man, I hate that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. I hate that motherfucker. Like, because... Just, just your, your your language. It probably just you don't know how to sugarcoat it like maybe Jeremy's. Oh uh, come on! You know, you know, you know. No, I'm just joking around. Oh, shit. No. Jeremy does like, Jeremy does sugarcoat nothing. I know. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Like everybody, everybody's gonna um have have that one person they can relate to, and you can talk to him a certain way, and he gets it. And then Jamie can say the exact same thing, but it's like fuck that moment. No, oh, yeah, it's well, not the same. Jeremy, tell me a little bit about security. Or professionalism in France versus the U.S. <laughs> I shouldn't answer that, man. You can, no, no, you can speak in generalities. You can speak okay, like. You know. I mean, from my point of view, uh, I mean, people in America are not as professional as in France for different reasons that I could spot. First is that security here is uh, a lot of side job. A lot of uh, the officer I work with. On different account they are doing security slash uber slash actor <laughs> yeah. slash whatever you want yeah yeah so for this reason and also the fact that you can get your security guard pretty easily by internet like you spend five ten hours on internet and if you're not too stupid you can get your, your security Shit, guard that's too long. That's yeah. Too long. <laughs> yeah and and you know what then you can start working and what and i mean in, in France, if you want to work in the security industry, you have to go two weeks, do a training somewhere and pay for that very expensive, like something like probably $1,000. Oh, that's a lot. Here for $90, you get, you get that. <laughs> so obviously, man, you have to deal with a lot of people here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So m most, of, most of my job, most of our job is to find the good people. That's, that's more about this than anything else. The, yeah. I'm struggling more with people than with my actual task. Right. Can I chime in? When I know nothing about security, okay? But when I first was introduced to Jamie by a good friend Jason and Tim, when I saw what they were about, I'm like, dude, these guys look like badass. Cause I'm used to that big heavy set security car just stands by the door and I'm thinking, this guy's not gonna chase me down and I'm not scared of him. But your team, I'm like, all right, I won't. Well, look at this, look at this fucking guy. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with that. Look at this fucking guy. Shit. Yeah, in a, in a harder <laughs> end. Is Okay, in France, we have more, I mean, it's not more professional, but the guys are trained. Yeah. So when you meet someone with a certification, you know that he can do the job. At least he, he can, he's going to try. At least he's going to try. That's something. But here, you can spot someone who is very bad, who doesn't care because he just passed his card. Like, he has a weekend off, so let's try it. <laughs> but in other hand, in America, well, I, I never seen professional like yeah. I seen in America, professional people. Like, I meet a lot of people in security industry. Guys, you look like... You look like LAPD, you look like military, you yeah. look great and you are doing a great job. So I think in America it's very interesting. You have two extremes. The, the, the range is crazy. In France, you're not going to see really big professional one because those guys are military, mm -hmm. commando, police. But you're going to have a good range. You're going to have pre people professional. Yeah. Here the range is big. Yeah. You have the very bad guy who completely doesn't care. Yeah. He doesn't even know how to... <laughs> To, to wear clothes, to dress himself. Yeah. But you have also the badass guy who looks like fucking policeman, uh, even better than that. So yeah. that's kind of cool. But 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 that's how I imagine private security. 
I want that bad motherfucker. Yeah. Like I don't want to yeah. fight. I want people to look at him and be like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with him. You know? Yeah. So that's the the, so, the fun so part. So per, per 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 gig or venue, obviously it depends on um, the personnel. Like how, how many do you start with? Two or three guy. I mean. I don't know, man. Jeremy, what do you think? You know, it depends on situation, right? Right. I mean, we we have to see with the client what what does he want. Uh, I like asking the client's opinion and I like to give my opinion and then we try to find uh, a balanced decision about how many guys, what, what we should do, even the schedule. Most, most likely, uh, the client doesn't really know when, when they ask us to do security somewhere, they, they don't really know, they are not in the industry. So I got a good question. So what are security allowed to do? Like, let's say I messed up. Uh, I'm, I'm the MF, right? The, the, the motherfucker. I'm the, I'm the motherfucker. Do you, do you get to punch me out? I mean, what, what, what's what's in reason here? No, nah, not, not, not really. It depends on the level of force. You know, for example, like if you're, you know, security guards in, in, in the U.S. are not police officers. Okay. Right. And, and, and that's, that's what I want to know because I yeah. want to know what you can do to me. Can you shoot me? Can you arrest me? Can you pepper spray me? Like what, what, what's, what's like, like that, that irate person? Like, okay, we got to take this guy down. You are able to do what is necessary in the immediate defense of your own life or others mm. as any citizen i guess as any citizen but the only thing is that we are paid to pay we are getting paid to pay attention of what's going on and prevent what's going on Correct. and then we have the same i think we have the same uh rights that anyone you just have to protect yourself so i guess it's up to you up to the situation now now state by state is different state by state is slightly different slightly yeah it's not like, the word it's slightly. Not, for example like in a um in tennessee uh, a guard can actually legally like almost practically break into somebody's house mm. to uh, initiate an arrest now that's that's different and that's kind of unusual i think because in california you literally can't do anything mm -mm. right no. um uh, you know different states have different rules like for example virginia in order to do security for uh body to do bodyguard work executive protection you actually have to have a uh, license from a bodyguarding school licensed by Virginia. So they actually have Virginia actually has a pretty good program. You got to go 2 weeks, 40 hours, 40 hours a week of EP training and then some That's in order good. To, in order to get your That's license. Um, because in Virginia, in Northern Virginia, who are all your clients going to be for bodyguard work? It's going to be diplomats, right? Politicians. Oh yeah, you're right. No, no, no so you're you right. cannot fuck that up. You're right. right. You can't just hire like you know, like some other companies that I know in California where, hey, that guy's got a, got a pulse. Yeah, put him on EP right now. Put him on, you know, Beyonce. You know, okay. it, it, can't, it can't happen. Not in Virginia. Yeah, we went to, uh, to, uh, to Brazil with my uh, former bosses. Yeah. And yeah, of course, I had like, like a swimsuit and no t-shirt because I had to be part of everything. I cannot be just like in suit with my, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, so yeah, that, that's kind of true. Yeah, man, you know, like, it, it really just depends on the client. Some clients are wacky. Um, you know, some clients are great. Um, EP, EP is weird because, like, I've realized after doing bodyguard work for so many years that I think everyone's crazy, right? I don't think anyone's normal. Because when you go out and get to know these people, despite their success and despite, you know, how much money they make, they're, they're, they're insane just like everybody else. They have the same problems a normal person has. Mm. You know, they have almost always have family issues almost always have some sort of, you know, marital issue with their wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. Almost always have problems with their kids. That's 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 everybody. It doesn't matter how much money you make. Everybody has those same problems. Mm. It just so happens that these people have, you know, a little bit more money than most. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really, honestly, for me, it doesn't really... I don't think it really made them any happier. No. You know, I totally agree weird. with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I live with them for four years and they have the same kind of problem than us, just another level, mm -hmm. like with more money. Same shit, just more money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. And uh, I had, I did have one client that um, just spent like insane amounts of money. Every day it, it was like answering the door or the, the gate from Amazon, like 50 boxes, something insane, just had an unlimited amount of money. I'm like, does, it, does this person need all this stuff? Most of it just goes down into the basement. And I think that they just like seeing stuff on the internet that looks great, buys it. If it comes, great. If I use it, great. If, it, if I don't use it, fine. That's how much money some of these people have. Mm. You know? And I'm like, man, I don't know. For me, it was a red flag because it's a sign of unhappiness, right? It's yeah. a sign of unhappiness, right? yeah. If you need to continue to buy things over and over and over again, and you don't even use it, 
and you don't even give it away. You just keep it. Something's wrong. Yeah, you know? something's wrong. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how many pairs of shoes do you need? How many pairs of, you know, the most expensive? And you know, the weirdest thing, like really super expensive <clears throat> chairs, you know, or expensive mirror. How many do you? How many do you need? You only you only live in a okay. Granted, the house is a mansion, but even then, there's li limited space. For sure. Let's say you have twenty thousand square foot mansion, mm. which is huge. Huge. Twenty thousand. That's 20, like a 000. store. Right? <laughs> Where do you live at? A, a, a store? Vons? I would be lost. I guarantee you, 20,000 square feet with unlimited money, my clients have found a way to make it like completely full. Right. Yeah, it looks just, you know, I think cluttered. it's a short-term solution to a long-term problem because look, you and I, I mean, if we, have, if we are not unhappy, we're going to find a way to be happy. We're going to think about it, go out, see people, or do whatever you need to do, go to the gym. gym. But these people, they are not happy. Not all of them, obviously, but... I think for most of them, when you have a lot of money, what you do? You, are, you don't feel well? Go to Amazon, order like <laughs> 5,000 well, stuff. Well, and they trained themselves to be happy, the temporary happiness, right? Yeah, yeah that's what I, I, I got yeah. it now. But then I think it goes it, away because... I think it's a trap yeah, to it, have all of this money because maybe I would do the same. You know, if I would have a lot of money, oh, I don't feel great. Oh, let's go to vacation. That's fake vacation. I don't want really to go. Yeah. You know, then when you don't have this money, you have to find other solution. No, you're 100 percent right. That's you know, a even for me. even even when you travel, it's like God. You know, you're not really happy, right? Like you have to you have to solve the uh, the cause of your unhappiness, not the symptom. Correct. You know, you know the symptom is like you know you're buying all this weird shit. Like, but you really have to solve why it is that you're unhappy. You know, and um, I think a lot of have has to do with purpose. I think that when people are sitting around all the time thinking about shit, you know, they go nuts. You know, like, and they don't have any real friends. Well, you know, I, I when I look at my life, I think I remember the best experience was me doing stuff. Yeah. Instead of me buying stuff, I can't tell Correct, you. Yeah. Oh, I, I had my first Jordans. I never talk about that stuff, but when I do talk I about maybe my, yes. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> maybe for him yes. Yeah. The first Jordan is like. Yeah. But but when I when I talk about my happiness, I always yeah. go back to the simple times. Like, oh, remember the time we did this together and yeah. we got caught? Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Most of the time, it's something crazy, not ex expensive. Exactly. You didn't it, 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 it cost no money. It just came to you. It just happened to you, and yeah, that was the no money. experience. Yeah, I agree with that. Me, you know, like, um, I like learning, you know, for me, and, uh, you know, spending time, obviously, with, with close friends. But, you know, for me, spending has never been, you know, what makes me happy. As a matter of fact, when I spend, I feel bad. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, man, I got to spend. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, I'm really, yeah. I'm actually particularly frugal, unless I absolutely need something. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, you know, like clients are, are coming all shapes and sizes. I mean, I'm glad my, my, my former bosses actually was very good with money. They actually teach me a lot. You know, what I used to say is that th these guys uh, gave me a second education mm -hmm. because I was living with them like almost all the time. And they were not this kind of people just spending, spending. They were actually check the discount, the coupon and yeah. all of this. And at the beginning, when I started working with them, I was like, Man, you are fucking rich. What, what would you look for the coupon, the thing? And then I understand is it whatever how much money they have, they were just wanted to spend it correctly yeah. and not being stupid. And if this guy can get ten percent, it's not because I have million that I couldn't get ten percent. I have so they actually I, I'm pretty happy about it. I, I was fortunate, and I, I get a second education for that. They were very smart and managing the money very well. So sometimes depend of the client, I guess it depends. Yeah. You know, it really depends on the client, and, and you were fortunate. You know, you had what sounds like a good family. A lot yeah. of yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. A lot of guys in the bodyguarding and executive protection industry don't. That was crazy, right? Oh uh, man, <laughs> I, I heard some crazy shit. I heard... I'm sure, I'm sure there's levels yeah, to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Levels, man. I haven't experienced it. Hell but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like they say that if you're a bodyguard and you've never been fired from a job, you're not really a bodyguard because so everybody man, gets that's fired. That's why told me one day. Everybody gets fired, man. <laughs> so know? um. The, in this line of work, because uh, you guys go through a lot, does it affect some people's psyche, mental? Like, does it mess you up sometimes? Like, you, I need to take a break. You know what I mean? Because I heard, like, in the military, uh, military at least, when they go off to, you know, let's say Afghanistan, they come back, they have to go to a, a psychologist just to make sure they're legit. And I can't say no names either, but I have a, a buddy who's in the Air Force, and... You know, when they do, like when they have to kill somebody, like fly and kill somebody, they have to come back and get evaluated, make sure they're cool. Because at the end of the day, they're humans. Yeah. Hey, I just dropped a bomb on some family here. Like they have 
uncles yeah. and aunts, right? And, and the they mission, have to. Yeah. On the mission, I guess you are like, you have to do it, it's your job, but the night when you are just with yourself on your bed before sleeping, this is just you and you. There is no military, no position. Correct, correct. This is you and you. And I think the human uh, uh, layer, Compo- yeah, come, come, component. Yeah, compound come over and you are like, oh, what? Did I do that? I guess. I don't know. I never can know one, but I can understand that. Yeah. I so, understand I, that. No, I, just a question because, uh, I mean, I have never had to punch out nobody. <laughs> You know what I mean? Or, or n- n- I've never been, aside from living in the hood and, 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 and a gangster coming up to me with a gun, that's the only thing I ever experienced scared, right? And to this day, I haven't forgot it. Oh. <laughs> like, I haven't forgot it. You have to do a little, a, a few more of them, then it gets, you get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to survive a few more. Then, then you I'll don't get right. scared anymore. Yeah, right? you're okay. like, oh man, here we it's go. It's the yeah, sixth yeah. time. Fuck. <laughs> it's just time out of my day now. Yeah. At this point, you know, who gives yeah. a fuck, you know? But um, but yeah, man. You know, like I, I, I think it's it's just weird the, the industry the way it is, dude. You know, but you have to stay in shape. That's at least what I like for my guys. Like you know, obviously Jeremy's in shape. Yeah. What do you do to 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 stay in shape? How do you, especially during quarantine? What do you been doing? Oh, I do gym at home, man. Yeah. Yeah, I have just a bench, a uh, couple of dumbbells, and I keep in shape. Go to run sometimes. Okay. Yeah, because I eat a lot of food with this situation in lockdown. I keep eating. Are you still vegan or no? No, no, I, uh, man, I was yeah. losing so much weight. But I tried three months and a half. That's a pretty long time. Yeah, that, I was, yeah, that was great. But I was not getting weight. I'm like, oh, and then I get back to the chicken and man, boom. <laughs> so, um, but about energy and I was, I was feeling great. For real, I was really feeling great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I cannot, you cannot make it last forever. I mean, especially if you like walking out. And if you have a very active life like I have, uh, I'm a PTV man, part-time vegan. Oh, yeah, my girl. Um, That's my, what I was doing. My, my girl, she, 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 she's like, she's hardcore, right? And hardcore. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> when I eat vegan, I never feel tired. I never feel correct. Sleepy, uh, but I love it. but I was always hungry. Oh no, I was not. I was always hungry. Yeah. That, like, the vegetables can only stay in you so long. You know? What what means part vegan? You were, were like eating. Oh, part time vegan. Yeah, part time like you were eating. Oh, meat. like uh, if I if if I, at home it's gonna be vegan. Oh, okay. Yeah, then yeah. when I'm in like with you guys, you want to go in and out. I'm gonna eat me a burger. Yeah, yeah. I was doing the same. Yeah. yeah. No, I was full time vegan for like all, like almost two years. Damn. Yeah. You know, I did feel a lot better. <laughs> no, I, no, you I you, you feel a lot better. Um, it's it's definitely cleaner and. There's there's something that goes into it. I, I do feel different, but like you said, for me, if if you're trying to bulk and everything, yeah. uh, the, the amount of food you have to eat, I feel I felt I, felt I always had to eat something. <sighs> Every two hours, I always had to eat something. <laughs> I know. And and you know sometimes I miss just eating junk food and just falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like now now like I, especially in quarantine because I don't have a gym, I really have to watch what I eat. Mm-hmm. Right, because yesterday, like for instance, I went, I ran, ran through the hills, skipped some rope. You know, I worked out at the park, did some push-ups and shit. You know, like yeah, calisthenics. Because without gyms, man, it's kind of hard, and it's I'm, very hard. I'm I'm used to like lifting weights, you know. But also, I think in our country, man, um, the reason why a lot of people can't lose weight, our portions is huge. Yeah, that's correct. Right? Oh, dude, tell me about that. The portions in France. Of what? Well, you know, food. <laughs> yeah, the food. Like the food. when you go, like, you, like, you go. everything is smaller. For sure, 100%. Like yeah, your little coffee. How much smaller? Like, not maybe not hard, but I would I would say like 35% smaller than everything. That's a lot, Especially man. for your drink. Guys, what do you do with... <laughs> no, with, it's true. With diet, or whatever it is inside. It's, or even Super your coffee. Big goal. What do you find? What do you do with that? I can I can last one day with that. <laughs> so yeah, everything here is bigger. Everything stay longer. And yeah, I guess that's different. This is my diet coffee right here. But, but also... Diet also. <laughs> <laughs> our food is so processed, man. Yeah, that, no, that's the problem. It, it, it's very yeah. processed. Uh, the cows, they're injecting these hormones so they can grow faster. I think everywhere, bigger. man. Even in France. I'm not going to tell you in France we are like good cow, natural. No, I think it's everywhere the same. If the industry is the same. If you take organic, I think you're good. But in France, it's the same. We do the same with the chicken and with the cow. And well, think about it. The bigger the chicken, the more people can feed. No, and the more they can sell it for. Right, because they're yeah, selling that's it by the weight. About, about, yeah, oh, that's more about it. Yeah, yeah. I that's haven't what even they thought do. about that, dude. Because yeah. most likely they put water on it. Water or like a solution with yeah. most like water, but there is nothing more. You don't get more protein, more nutrients. <laughs> you just get more weight, and yeah. they, you pay more. For that's sure. that it is. Yeah, but then you consume that. You right? consume that. So yeah. like people are inflamed. Right? You're, <laughs> yeah. you're you're inflaming your body. Like when I actually like I think the U.S. is the worst. I'm not saying all the countries are are you know uh, can be absolved of it. 
But definitely the U.S. I think puts the most chemicals because like when I'm traveling, I can actually eat meat and I don't feel terrible mm -hmm. after eating meat. Mm -hmm. Like like, okay, like yeah. Colombia, even Mexico. Mm -hmm. Go to Mexico, have a taco or have some meat. You feel fine. Yeah. But you know, if you come to the U.S. and you have a steak, you gotta be like, oh man, like. You know, before I went all organic, I used to thought like it's the same shit. But it's not. Oh, the ketchup, you taste the tomato. The meat, if you if you get organic meat. You don't even have to season it. It's good already. I, and I'm not even organic. BSing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 tra I slowly tra transition to it. The mustard has a stronger kick. Yeah, yeah. It was weird. I was like, okay. Yeah. The milk. If you ever buy like organic milk, it lasts like three months. You buy regular milk, what? two weeks. I swear to God. Go, go ne ne Next time you go to the... Go, go look at organic milk, like Horizon. Look at expiration... Exp expiration... Expir I can't even talk right now. Expiration date. Expiration date. <laughs> and then and then look at the regular gallon milk that you they try to sell you like two for five or something. Oh, yeah. Look at the dates, man. It's crazy. And uh, the organic milk lasts longer and it tastes better. Yeah. Actually, it tastes sweeter. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know what? Unfortunately for me, I'm lactose intolerant. I cannot drink milk. Oh. Okay. I am Asian, so. <laughs> Straight up. No cheese? I can eat cheese. It's weird. But I have to like, oh, yeah. I definitely cannot drink milk. Like, I can have a pizza, no problem. Yeah. But if I drink milk, like, it's just, it's over. And it's okay, man. I read something. It was like, oh, you're not lactose intolerant. You're just not a baby cow. Yeah. I, no, I read something like that. I don't even drink uh, cow milk anymore. I, almond and... Uh, almond milk? Soy. Uh, Almond's good. Oats milk, but, like, cow milk, I yeah. stop long I love almond milk, milk man. Almond, almond, like, good, almond yeah. milk is good. Just, yeah, man, just, so I can't do it with my cereal. I'm so used to regular milk. No way. Yeah, it messes me. I'm like, dude, the taste is not there. Because uh, <laughs> since you are shy, maybe you are, you are used to the cow milk. I don't know, I man. Don't know I'm used to the cow milk. When I put almond milk, I put soy milk. It doesn't taste the same to me, man. Yeah, that doesn't taste the same, but that's way better for you, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's what I read. Yeah. But dude, like, um, when do you think the gyms are going to open up again? You know? You no, know, it's already open in some states. Gyms? Yeah, Hawaii, it's already open. No, I, Wait, I, Hawaii? I, I keep spotting everywhere, yeah. Damn. Yeah, so there's some states okay, that are already Let me ask both of you a question. If, my, personally, I believe the gym shouldn't even have been closed. Maybe limited the people. But when you're at the gym, it's such a stress reliever, yeah? Jeremy, you can... Yeah. When I work out, it's such a stress reliever. And that's like a drug. And, and it, makes, it makes your body stronger and healthier. Yeah. yeah. And then they close that. <laughs> that I makes sense. That's a big part why people get crazy, man. Yeah. Gym for some people, this is like like it's religion. Been, yeah, yeah, it's religion from yeah. every day, you know? I mean, I'm glad I get the equipment at home and I can, but... It, oh, but it's not, not the same, man. It's not the same. Even the atmosphere you are with people who do the same than you, that's good energy, you know? The atmosphere yeah. is helping you. For sure. Music and stuff. But yeah, yeah, I think... I mean, I understand for sanitary reason you have to close it because we touch uh, we touch all the same thing. No, one hundred percent. So I think it's actually helping. But uh, yeah, that's something. check this out. So I'm a uh, my gyms are twenty four hour fitness. I've been at LA Fitness and I only been Equinox once. My friend took me, and but now I have Planet Fitness because here in downtown I had to sign up for Planet Fitness because the the twenty four hour fitness down here right here in Hope yeah or Flower. They're not 24 hours no more. So what? I said, I'm going to pay 10 bucks more and go to Planet Fitness because it's 24 hours, right? And people make fun of Planet Fitness, but it's the cleanest gym i ever seen. The employees are always clean. Sanitizers are everywhere. And this is before coronavirus. Yeah. Okay. But but every time I walk in, it doesn't matter what time. One of the employees, I think that's part of their job description, is to clean it. And they, they clean the machine top to bottom, bro. Here in downtown? Here in downtown. I, I think every Planet Fitness. They clean it is. top it's the cleanest gym I've ever seen. And it, they even tell you, you know, if there's no toilet paper or, or soap, let us know. And then every every station you go to, they have a hand sanitizer. And this is before coronavirus. So it's the cleanest gym I've ever seen. Only downside is that they're not going to have all the heavyweights. Oh, uh, yeah? That's <laughs> because fine. It, it's That's like fine. a starter gym. No, you, it's you, no intimidation. It's a starter you gym. You can make it work. Yeah. You don't have no, to have super heavy shit. No, no. Yeah. Uh, the heaviest dumbbell they got, I think it's 80 pounds. That's, that's enough, fine, man. man. That's a lot, dude. That's a if lot. someone is complaining about it, I mean, like, man. Oh uh, man, I can only do eighty pounds. Is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so like, roidaholics. I I think forty is good. Forty five is good for me. If you go, you can yeah. go up to forty five. It's good for me. You, know? you can make it work, dude. Do you know guys that like juice at the gym? Like back in the day, that's where you used to get your your steroids, right? You go to the gym, and if you were like, what look, I heard stories, but I never seen. I heard stories like, yeah. oh yeah, dad. I'm like, who that guy? Yeah. yeah. 
Asking, but but, 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 but yeah. I never see. <laughs> they even take injection in the, the yeah, restroom. I, I, in the yeah. restroom. Now you have sign on LA Fitness. Please don't get injection or steroids <laughs> inside. There is camera, blah, 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 CCTV. Bullshit, yeah. bullshit. They're not, dude, you're not allowed to put cameras in fucking bathrooms. No. You can't do no, that shit. Yeah, no. You know? So these guys would juice in the gym. Like, yeah. Boom. They, they would sell and they would, they would juice in the gym. Damn. Well, that was, you know, back in the day, you know, for me. And, you know, it was like, that's just how you got your shit was you, would, you know, find a dude. And you kind of like, hey man, like, I never uh, took, I, n- I yeah. never took like steroids or anything. But the stories I hear, like, oh, you feel like this amount of energy. No, okay, everyone I took some. I took some. Oh, you did? Yeah. No, everyone I know that's taking it. Uh huh. Like I'm know, scared, dude. Like I'm scared. First of all, I don't like needles, man. So I just, I, yeah. I'm not disciplined to take it every fucking day. Or like, there's like a, a schedule you have to follow. Mm-hmm. You have to like measure your biorhythms. Nah, yeah. I don't get, dude. You have to follow everything if you want to do it right. I was doing like long time ago when I was body down. Yeah. That was kind of why I get also, uh, how you say, um, that's why they high on me kind of also. That's that's part of my job also to be, you know. Yeah. So I was way bigger than that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, that that's something you have to follow, uh, follow the door. The uh, also, also what a lot of people don't realize is just because you take steroids, you still have to put in the work. You still have to go to the gym, yeah. Am I right? Yeah, people are like, oh, you take steroids, that's why, I mean, man. No, I you take still steroid, gotta put in the work, man. Because I take steroids, I get the energy I need to stay at the gym two hours and a half. But that's it. I'm gonna eat more food, I'm gonna synthesize the protein better, but well, if you take steroids, you stay at home watching Netflix, nothing's gonna happen to you, man. <laughs> no, people are like, oh, you take... When I see people at the gym, I cannot know when they take steroids, but I still respect them because, okay, you just put... No, put you guys still... Another level. You, you still gotta put in the work, man. Yeah, that's it. No man, like I, I, I just think that it affects people differently. Like for for instance, I have a very close friend and you know, he, he's like, Hey man, like, you know, you should get on, you know, steroids and I'll show you how to do it and whatnot. I'm like, oh, all right, you know, then I asked him about, hey man, like, is it true that your your fucking balls shrink and shit? Mm-hmm. And he's like, Yeah. And then I'm like <laughs> That's different. And then I'm like, but he's like, dude, don't worry, it'll when you stop taking, it goes back. But and then he qualified it, but it depends on the person. And I'm like, you know what? No, 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 no. I, wow. I will not. No, man. If that, if that's if what that, it costs, if that touch this, no, no way. Then, then why am I working out for it? So that's very different for everybody. I never had any issues with anything. That's why I, I could keep going for like two years. I guess I did mm. that for two, two. Oh three. shit, that's a long time. Yeah, but I was off and on. Okay. But for three years, I I think since I was EP, I just keep doing it because that was part of my job. I guess I was I was uh, liking it. But I never had any issue. That depends how much doors and everything. That's, I, I feel everything. moderation is the word. Yeah, I like think, everything. I think if you, you know, let, let's say I, I'm, I'm, I never took it, but I'm just saying if you took three months, wait four months and then take three months, I think, yeah, you know, you, I think the body can recover. You're supposed to cycle. Yeah, but but if, so, if, if you're just... Mm. No, there's some people, dude, they don't know They don't know fucking cycling. They just take it every every day. Yeah, the problem is that the people cannot go off because they, they love it so much. They love the results. They're like, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. But man, you have to stop. After <laughs> after three months, yeah, yeah. usually, you have to stop three months. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm going to go for eight months. I'm like, okay, man. <laughs> so then they come to you and say, oh, you can have problem. I mean, man, it's been, eight, it's been one year almost you are on. So yeah, that depends. And it's expensive too, man. It's not like it people think steroids is free. Dude, it's not free. It's illegal, yeah? Uh, yes. There is, you can have like, med- med- medical reason, like the, your doctor can give to you if you have low oh. testosterone, but like for loisir, entertainment, yeah, you cannot do that. Yeah, you can't just go, hey, you know, doc, I, I just want to look yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> I want to look good. <laughs> so, now I'm getting older, I wouldn't do it again. Because, you know, for the organs, it's not good. And, no, you know, like, like I think that, like, when I get older is when I'll do it. Like, I'll do it, like, in a, if I ever make it to 60. Because at that point, who cares? Okay, yeah, maybe at the end, yeah, because yeah. who cares? You know, at yeah. 60 years old, like, I'll just try it so I can have energy, so I can walk around at least. But like you said, if, if, if they, they they know how, what your the amount your body needs and everyone's different, right? And the doctor says, they did all the blood tests, yeah, okay, you, you can definitely take this amount. You'll be okay. Mm. Then that's different than... Oh, a regular person like I'm just gonna take it because I, I mean, like the feeling <laughs> it's more about what you need it's, it's not about your body but if you already have a good level of testosterone and if you take more than what you need then this is where you get the benefit the result of big muscle and stuff if you have but a lot of times if we all just go work out naturally we're gonna feel better and do it naturally right well, there's that, also works. that works well. but you know what like, to be fair I think some people definitely are more genetically gifted right oh and 100% yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, so like you have to like take that into Like account. I had one friend, he always had a chest. 
I was just skinning bones. Like he 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 didn't do no push ups. He he, he just he just he just had it, dude. I'm like, what the? You know what I mean? Oh, you know what I've noticed? There are some people that age faster than other people, right? Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. Asian people, right? Yeah, (laughs) dude, I'm 38, dude. I'm 38. 38. Oh no no, way! way, Yeah, that that I didn't know. I thought you were like 30, 32. Yeah, Yeah, I'm 38. 30, yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, dude. Oh shit! Wow. Yeah, but it does the same for so, you. So, so, on, so, so when I'm at the gym, you know, we're working out and, and, and I joke around with the guys. And they're like, oh, man, because you're, you're still in your 20s, bro. You, you're lucky. I'm like, man, I'm 38. <laughs> I'm older than them, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I'm older than you, man. And then the, the thing about looking young is this. I love basketball, right? I love shooting around. And then every time they'll be like, hey, man, you want to play? And I'm like, nah, man, because I'm freaking old. I, I, things break now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Things break. They break right. fast, too. And I'm like, nah, man. And they always put me with the fastest high school guy. Yeah, because you're I young. can't. Yeah, I can't do it no more. It's tough, yeah, man. man. It's tough. And then you know, we all we're all up there in age. You just have to warm up more. Yeah. You have to stretch. You know, I, I have to do this like ru- I have to do this like routine before I work out, right? In our twenties, let's yeah. just go. I just start like three or four years ago. Start like warming up and do all. Before I was like, I don't care. I just yeah. go. I push. Now I, I need my band here, my band here, because <laughs> yeah. this, I need a belt here. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's a whole process no. just to go to work out. Yeah. How, yeah. How, how old are you, Jeremy? 33. Still good age, man. I'm fucking 43. Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> still like, good age, man. Like, we're we're like, still good. Like, we're still good. Uh, I like, I'm not, I mean, I'm not too far from you. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I think I got more mileage than you do, dude. I think Probably. I'm like, I've, <laughs> yeah. I've got a lot of mileage, man. You know, like, life kicked the shit out of me more than once. For sure. For you sure. Know, like, uh, you know, it is what it is, right? Yeah. You know, I'm like fucking happy to even be here. You know, like I had, I had o- OD'd. I, I tell that story all the time. Fucking had OD'd on drugs and shit. Really? Like a fucking like, idiot. Like hard drugs? I don't know what it was. That's how stupid I was. Like the thing. hardest drug I ever took was ecstasy. <laughs> and, 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 and look, I, w- I was 16. I, w- I was, I was at, I was at Electric Daisy Carnival back in the day. When Electric was, Daisy Carnival. Like, like, like th- this is how raves were back then. Like it was underground. You get a flyer. And then you go to that location and they'll give you the real address. <sighs> and then you drive to the desert. Oh my god. And then you party, right? And I remember they gave me this blue pill, the blue smurf. It was 20 bucks. I'm like, this is ecstasy. I'm like, what is this little pill gonna do to me? I <laughs> popped it in, and I was the happiest person I ever been. And that was like my first drug I ever took. And then I was like, man. Oh, the first time? Like it's the first thing I ever took anything. Be- like before drinking and smoking weed. But it, it, to this day, I rank that the, the highest because I tried everything else, mm. but I, I never had an addicted personality. I, I, I do. I, I, I tried it. Shit. I tried it and, and I just tried it just to just to know. But I was never, you know, like, oh, my God, this this I, I need it. You know, I'm like OCD addicted person. I have to really be careful. I get addicted to shit real quick, mm-hmm. you know, so I have to like really like, you know, be like, OK, you know, I have to really moderate everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the first time I smoked weed. Um, was on an Indian reservation. Mm-hmm. We just sealed the deal with the tribe. But I'd rather have you smoke weed every day than do ecstasy every day. That that's oh, way dude, harder. Oh yeah, you up, man. yeah, dude. No, ecstasy, oh, man. ecstasy that's will fuck you up, man. No, but you see the right. difference. Yeah, yeah. It's also like 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 I have I have a friend, man. Um, known him for a long time, middle school, and like a brother, right? But then alcohol has kicked in so bad. Alcoholism? So bad. Yeah. Higher. Like like, so. it's bad, right? And I never imagined that for my friend. Like I hear stories about other people, but when you you see it in real life. Anyways, um, I wish he was more like weed. Like, oh, he's addicted to weed because alcohol just beats you up. Yeah, because like, your organs and your brain. Yeah. Like, like people don't un- underestimate what alcohol does to your brain, right? Because it really does fuck up your brain chemistry, man. Not just your 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 liver and all that. Like, I think that the, the worst thing alcohol does is fuck with your brain. Because, mm. yeah. like, you can tell when someone's an alcoholic even when they're not drinking. Wow. Correct. Yeah, yeah you yeah, can tell on his face and everything. Wow. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think that the more I get hold, and I don't really like alcohol no more. Like, no. The yeah, more I, more I, don't, I don't like because even the day after, I need so much time to recover, even if I didn't even drink a lot. So, yeah, that, that's... Dude, I'm a lightweight, Jeremy. Half a beer, I'm fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I turn red, that's why I don't take it. Now, like, I'm not saying I don't drink. It has to be in the right setting. Like, if I'm just going to take a, a, a drink here, I'm going to walk home, I'm going to be fucked up. I might not even make it home. <laughs> like, you know, that's why I don't like date, dating chicks, you know what I'm saying, that, that drink and smoke and shit like that. It's fucking just, 
it's a bad habit. Yeah. You know, it's like they, they drag you into that shit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, let's go drinking. And, you know, like, uh, no. Well, fuck you then, you pussy. I'm like, what? You know what? Bitch, Dude, I get like, called out all the time. Oh. Whoa. Well, like, why, why you don't have a drink in your hand? I'm like, I don't drink, man. So, yeah. I, I need to make up a new excuse. Like, uh, I'm allergic. I think that's what I'm going to say now. Uh, bro, I, I'm, I have bad kidneys. I'm going to make some shit up. You know what I mean? Dude, but it's weird right now, man. Like, I've noticed that, like, you know, we were talking about with Wally yesterday. Um, like, dating scene-wise, right? Like, I think chicks are more alcoholic than men. Like, mm. Girls seem to drink well, drink more. You know what I'm saying? I think it's like... You know, they, do you think a lot has to do yeah, with um? I think it's well, do you think a lot has to do because you know when we drink is an escape. Yeah. And with women, like they always have to upkeep their like oh I, I need to look a certain way I need to feel a certain way and then it, it brings up their morale down so maybe that's why they drink more. They just seem to drink more, like wine, wine all the time, wine, wine like you know, martinis here. I'm like, dude, this thing adds up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm in charge of Mama Shelter over there, the security, and we kick out almost. 60% of girls and only 40% of guys because girls get they, they have no limit you know the guy has a limit because maybe he feel like a guy he has to bring the chick home or mm -hmm. he has to he has to make it because he's a guy or he's a drive. He doesn't care he has to drive or stuff yeah. like that he has responsibilities as a man probably but girls doesn't care they go they go well to the top they did a that. study and they said uh that women the alcohol the, for their judgment it's a lot lower than men what does that mean? Right. So meaning a guy, like we could drink the same amount of beer, but our judgment is like, okay, our decision making. Yeah. You know, it doesn't affect us as much. It does affect you, right? But not, not as much. But women, it affects them way more. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. when you say they don't care, because you, you work in EP where, you know, sometimes the girls are so crazy, dude. Oh my God, dude. Like you can't, you can't stop them. You know, it's hard. No, you, can't. you know That's what I'm saying? The they, they, they're that. talking out of their, their ass and, 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 and they're fighting everybody. You get what I mean? And you're a dude and, and you're like, dude, how do I ho hold this person down? This is, th that's when you need the, 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 the female security, dude. Uh, you gotta hop and in because this cannot, is too much. You cannot really interact. That's complicated. Yeah. Like, it, it's very, com it's very complicated because, because it's, you know, they did a study and they said that the women's when they when women drink alcohol, their decision making goes way down. Like, like the the I don't give a fuck attitude. Yeah, it's it's way higher. And and you and we all experience it where they're just out of control. Um, you know what, I man? Control. Like, if if you had a club with all guys, <laughs> it, it might not be a lot of fun, but there won't be a lot of West Hollywood. What's Hollywood, right? All guys. Yeah, but they don't have a lot of fights, which is weird, right? Mm -hmm. It's all guys. Mm -hmm. The only time you have fights is when there's women involved because the guys are going to fight for the women or the women are going to somehow instigate the guys to fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, I, I like, see that. Like, you could have the worst enemies in a bar. I mean, I want to kill that guy. But you guys, you could actually have a drink together. If Correct. Even with your worst enemy. That's true. Man. Even even for that those few hours, right? You might kill each other later, but if you're having a drink with your worst enemy, you could actually sit down and have a drink with the men. Yeah. But okay. as soon as you, you know, insert women into the equation, Oh man, dude. But this is in your, our DNA, you know, even Viking and you know when you see, you watch old movie uh, about castle and knight, they all drink. Yeah. This is something between men, we drink, there is no fight anymore during that part of time. Right. But then on the modern wo uh, world with women on the middle and oh, I, you touch go. my ass. <laughs> and I know, why you touch your ass? Huh? But before everybody was drinking and yeah. you know. Yeah, man, you, you, you insert any, any time you have women and alcohol <laughs> yeah. in a room. Dude, and you put like even just a sprinkling of men, you're gonna have fights. Mm. It's gonna it's gonna kick off, man, at some point, you know, because like for whatever you know, guys get jealous, or women, you know, is gonna instigate a man. Oh, that guy looked at me weird, you know, you know, a guy feels like he's gonna have to defend her honor. All yeah. sorts of things happen, or sometimes the women just fight themselves. Mm. A lot of times they just fight amongst each other, you know. What are you gonna do, right? You you put your hands on a woman, and all of a sudden now they sue the shit out of you, yeah. and you go to jail, you, you know? Uh, yeah, it, it's it's such a touchy subject because like who the cop is gonna believe oh man right oh, man. officer I, i'm trying to help her it is gonna always be her Especially word if you look like you are big she attacked me no 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 she, she could say man. she could say he put a hand on me they're gonna arrest us first and question us later yeah that's just how it's going to be that. oh you're going down that's, that's no doubt about it you're gonna go down so before doing ep in france i was in london this is where i start actually my uh, security career and I was working in nightclub to start I was very young and let me tell you when was a fight between men 
I was okay to be involved and to go was no no pressure. Yeah. When it was a fight involving girls, I was I don't know what to do. You can you cannot tell you you cannot do and they are crazy. They, they, they fight you, man. They, they, I I get beat up by a girl like a uh, different time. That's crazy. But yeah. They'll scratch you. They'll bite the shit out of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you you have to really really be careful. A lot of times you just gotta let it go. Hey, you know what? Just hmm. let the, let yeah, them kill each fight. other. <laughs> okay, fight. I mean? <laughs> All you can do is contain them. Don't. Don't try to stop it because you know there's a lot of nonsense involved in it. If you, you know, put your hands on a woman and all that, now you're the bad guy, right? Oh, dude. Uh, with cameras and shit. Oh my God, look at this dude. He's like, nah. You're gonna, as a dude, you're gonna get arrested. Yeah. It, it, I think the only way is just to leave the situation, call the cop yourself, because if you try to do anything and all she has to say is, he touched me. Come here, they're gonna arrest you. Yeah. Yeah. It. it and then question you later. It, 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 it's crazy, but man. Here in America, most clubs close early, right? Close to 30, yeah. 3 a.m. There is no no more than that. No, I Mi expect if you find a good club, I guess. Miami's Undercover. Di Miami's different, right? In L.A. In, ah, this is in California? Oh, in okay. Ca in California, yeah. yeah no, but I heard back in the day, L.A. used to close at 6. I, what yeah. happened? Like, who changed that? I, that I, that's I heard. better, man. That's, that's way better. In France, it's until 6 a.m., 4 a.m. to 6, it's only for fights. Like oh, when I was walking in London, yeah. you know, at, after 3 a.m., nobody's there. Yeah. Everybody's drunk. It's all about fight. What are you going to do? What are you going to party from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m.? For three hours, you, you are fucked up, man. <laughs> and that, that was the worst. I was like, what don't they close the club? What do we close at 6 a.m.? That's so much. And here, 2.30, 3 a.m. is a good time to go home, I guess. 2, or two to 3.30, I think, is okay. Because okay. anything more than that, really, like, does the business really make any more money? That's no, what I, I don't think even know. I don't I think so. Don't, I don't even know. Because like, if you're that drunk, you're not gonna be buying more alcohol, right? Oh yeah. You're, you know, you're gonna be drunk. You're, you you're just gonna be crazy. But also, if 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 they do it to six, you're not gonna go to the club at ten thirty. You're probably gonna go to the club at four. And then you're gonna spend more money before on the yes. restaurant. So it's the same thing. You're just ah, you're just pushing the time back, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Even if we that close at four, that means more. The volume of people are gonna show up at two. And then go to four. They're not going to show up at 10, 30, 11. Yeah. They're not, right? Yeah. No, actually, believe it or not, now that you push it, you know, put it that way. If they close at four and you show up to the club at like even, even at one, I think that might be a better time. Yeah. Yeah. You show up to the club at one, you party till about, you know, no, four. It depends what you did before, because is if you go to the club at one, but before you are at a restaurant drinking until that, that's, that's kind of the same. Maybe you go later at the club, but you. You still start partying at 8 p.m. Well, we'll check it out. Right? If, if, in theory, we close at 4 a.m. Technically, me and you guys, we can go eat at a restaurant, chill, eat, have a good stomach, and then we can go. We can still go out and be fine. Yeah. Right now, I feel, at least for me when I was 21, it was always rush. Bro, yeah. we got to get there at, at, at 10.30, and then the line gets long. And then by the time you get in, you're like, we have to drink fast. Because the, <laughs> cause 1.30... I, I experienced no, that when I came in there. 1.30... It's done. Yeah, it's done. And then yeah, you're waiting fun. in line to get the drinks and, and you're like, just give me three of those. And you're going faster. And like, you know, with alcohol, it, it's more like babysitting. You you, you don't want to take five shots at once. You want to take it within a, couple, uh, a certain amount of time. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know, man. Yeah, you know, like it, 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 it would depend. Like like I said, I think um, in, L in LA, in I think the clubs are open later too. You know what they do in LA? They start drinking the afternoon also. Like such a Sunday afternoon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Day the parties. service up, day parties, yeah. and I can when I spot some people starting drinking at three, four, four p.m. sunrise, they are still here at eleven p.m. I have a problem what? here. Yeah, we have. This is the worst. Like oh, big group, man. even girl, boy, big group. You see them at three p.m. They are good. They are good energy. But when you when you see them again at eleven p.m. midnight, one a.m., you are like, oh man, it's been like ten hours. You are here. <laughs> We're gonna have, for sure we're gonna have trouble with you in the next 30 minutes and man 90 percent of the, the, the time is the case no man that's crazy man to have that long drinking dude i'm gonna be able to stand up it doesn't yeah. matter how much i've drank if i've been like in one place for 10 hours even sipping a little bit man i, I wouldn't be able to stand up how can you stand up man? i get tired just being in the beach for like more than two hours after the yeah. sun hits me all day i'm burned so, so some to 10 love. hours man no it, that, that, that 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 would suck man to hell with it to hell with all that you know, but you know, what what else do you think, man, about the the, the U.S. man? Like, you know, you like it here so far? Or like, yeah. I like it. No, I mean, here I feel like people are a little bit spoiled. You know, that's why like, that's why I, I 
I saw. I don't know, maybe it's because of the Gruden amount, so I don't know how come. But just despite of that, I, I like it. I feel like there is more option to do. We meet more people from everywhere in the world. True. Uh, mine are kind of more open to for some subjects. For most of them, I learned that some subject, su some subjects are like more restricted. Uh, the way we talk, what we say, because you you are all about going to court. Uh, I'm gonna sue you. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so you know that was a big step for me because I have to improve uh, my, my my behave. You know uh, the way I talk, what I say, even when I talk to the guy or to my team. I have to pick my words correctly because they pay attention of what I say. They don't really care about the sense, but they do care about what word I pick. And so that was a big step to learn, but most likely I'm very happy. I see I'm gonna stay here. No, yeah, of course. I, I think that this is the greatest place in the world to be if you want to move up and yeah. you know um, better yourself, absolutely. I don't know about raising my child here. You know what? I don't know about that. I'm like, okay, let's say I'm gonna have a kid, to a boy, girl. Do I want my kid, uh, growing up here, especially in LA. Well, try different states too. Remember, America's huge, yeah. you know? So even in California, there's other little neighborhoods that you know you might you know, yeah. consider, you know? Like obviously downtown LA may not be everyone's cup of tea, but you know, if you go to outlying cities, go a little bit more into the interior of the state, yeah. you know, there's plenty of places I think that yeah. it's still good to raise kids. It might be expensive. I think at the end great. of the day, man, you know? because your kid is gonna spend the first four or five years like developing with you, and how you set that foundation is gonna bring them to the next. What about the environment? I mean, in France, we don't have a lot of advertising like you have. You have oh, advertising okay, okay. everywhere. You have yeah, fast okay. food everywhere. You have the option to do whatever at any time. You can get food at midnight if you yeah. have a nap. In France, the schedule are very are smaller. It's uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and after 5 p.m. you cannot do anything. Everything is closed. The restaurant goes until 9, 10, 11 p.m. That's it. There is no. I mean, food delivery is there only for one year, not before. What I mean in here, you have. If I was 16 years old, 17 years old here, I don't know if I would have be this shape. Why? Because there is a lot of options that I want to discover even now. All your fast food, all your mm -hmm. food oh, yeah. delivery <laughs> and stuff. That's like everything is possible. But also, that's great. That's why I like America as a, as an adult now. Everything is possible if you are smart. You can have a good life here because you have a lot of options. Now, if you have a kid, this option can mess you up. Oh, 100 percent. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, like uh, you mentioned fast food. Everyone I've met that's, all of my friends, all my good friends from other countries have said, man, the food in the US, the portions are huge. And the animals themselves don't even look like what they're supposed to look like, no. right? Like the chickens the in the people US. Them, the people themselves don't look, look like what they're supposed to look like. <laughs> <laughs> am I right? I'm not, am I being too mean? No, you're the, right. The, like we're not supposed to be like that. They're like, like, Jamie, this is not a chicken. No, that's, that's a chicken. <laughs> Dude, that's not a chicken from Mexico, or that's not a chicken <laughs> from fucking Colombia, because like a chicken, look, a chicken is a bird. Have you ever really seen a fat bird? No. Right? Oh, no. Cannot, chickens cannot be fat. Chickens are supposed to be just trim. Yeah. But in the U.S., because like from birth they're injected. Dude, they can't even. Shit. They can't even walk. <laughs> they can't even walk. I, I was watching last time. You have 300 million of population in America, so in the United States, uh -huh. 300 million. So yeah. I mean. That's why everything is bigger and you have to do all this shit and the industry is impacted by that. In yeah. France, we are 60 million. I mean, we okay. Dude, but can you imagine? Like, it's basically, a chicken is basically just a ball of meat with legs but that can't, it can't walk. It can't even walk. You know? But in other countries, like a chicken can practically fly. They live in, dude, chickens live in trees. Dude, you know how they say that we are what we eat? Yeah. So, some Americans are like that too. They can't walk either. <laughs> right. They're just a big ball of meat. No, they can't walk. <laughs> they need this little, look, like, okay. For me, it's, it's when, like, how much did you have to eat before I tell myself, like, I need to stop? Like, they didn't have this switch. Didn't. Like, like, oh, my knees hurt. I'm going to eat more. <laughs> oh, now I can't walk. I'm still going to eat more. Like, like no, nothing turned on and said, listen, you need to slow down. And you know what? There's a point of no return with weight, too. At some point, like, you get so big that I unless you give have... Up. I think you give up. You are like, you know what? I'm fat. I want this pizza. I want to watch Netflix. Why would I go to the gym? No, I mean, at certain point, I would, even me, I would give up. I would say, you know what? Let's have a good life. And sometimes even me, I'm like, I'm, I'm tired of watching my food, going to the gym every day. You know, it's 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 complicated. I'm, I'm been doing that for all my life. Yeah. Sometimes I want, you know what? What about having a life where I can eat whatever I want, 
watching Netflix and don't go to the gym. I would save a lot of time. I would be relaxed. I want to give up, man. So I can understand them. It's not good, but I can understand them. No, but dude, you feel like crap. When you're yeah. late, yeah, you're probably, yeah. Like, yeah, you're conscious. Yeah. So you, you, you're going to be so fat. You have the air conditioner on all the time. Yeah. Right? Because like, yeah. you sweat like... But you like you can't wipe your butt. You can't wipe your ass. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Some people cannot even. Uh, no, you can't scratch your own back. No, like when, when you get to arms. that point, it's 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 medical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But before that, I mean, especially in America, I feel like all this technology, this Netflix, is very more uh, expanded, and all this lifestyle is very easy here to just. I mean, this term you have chill, chill at home, Netflix, chill and Netflix. We don't have this in France. It's not something you do. We 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 go out. We move. We do something. You know. Here is really a thing, like yeah. being at home eating popcorn. <laughs> it's really a thing. No, I cannot enjoy it because I can control it, but I can really understand that people, some people just let it go. And now they have like Uber Eats and like, you yeah. know, Postmates. You don't even have to leave your house to be fat, right? Man, that's crazy. Man, well, you know what? Guess what, brother? We're going to deliver that fucking steak to you right to your door. Yeah. You don't have to do shit. You got a credit card? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Give me the credit card. I will make sure you have the best meal on the fucking planet. Well, Jamie, Wait 30 minutes. we are running low. Ah, time, so, uh, fuck. Say something and exit us out of uh, this episode. Thank you, Jeremy, for Thank showing you guys us. Thank for having me. You know, Thank you. We're, we're, we're getting this show on the road, so. It's good, man. It's, 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 it's uh, I, I got to meet new people and it, it's just fun, man. Yeah. So. This is our third episode, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm liking it. And I'm not just saying that because we're creating it. I'm, I'm editing it. No, it's just, it's just been a fun experience and we're going to grow. And we hope to ha have Jeremy back, man. Talk some okay. more stories. Yeah. No, what what the plan was to have you and Wally. And Wally's going to sit there with his women. Or is it, yeah, yeah. That's what he said he was going to do. I don't yeah. know if he's going to do it or not. You know Wally's full of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. remember when we went to that club? He was going <laughs> to... I don't know if we can say that. Hey, he might watch episode three and be like, Okay, if Wally doesn't watch, it's okay. I know he's going to watch it. I don't care. He's going to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. He's... Uh, he's we, we hold nothing back. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Bye-bye.